There's a lot of worry surrounding Grand Theft Auto 6 and whether the game will actually reach the expectations of the players. And recently, we've suffered quite a few disappointing launches, so I think it makes sense for people to be skeptical about GTA 6. But in this video, I want to debunk some common misconceptions about Rockstar and explain why I truly believe that GTA 6 will succeed. You eat babies! Everybody knows that! Leslie Benzies was one of the lead producers for Rockstar until 2014 when he left the company after the release of Grand Theft Auto V. In the time he was gone, every Rockstar studio was hard at work with Red Dead Redemption 2. Red Dead Redemption 2 is made without Leslie Benzies, and Red Dead 2 is easily Rockstar's most well-developed story yet. Not to say GTA 4 didn't have an incredible plot as well, but Red Dead Redemption 2 tugs at heartstrings like nothing I've ever watched, read, or played before. And I even have a video talking about the end of the game and why it's so important. There were three main writers for Red Dead Redemption too, that being Dan Hauser, Michael Unsworth, and Rupert Humphreys. I hope I'm pronouncing that name right. Sam Hauser helped produce the game as well, but from what I can find, it seems like he wasn't too involved with the writing. Well, as of now, Dan Hauser and Michael Unsworth have left the company, but Rupert Humphreys and Sam Hauser are still at Rockstar. That said, development for GTA 6 most likely started around 2014. Another possibility, and this is a stretch, GTA 5's development started right around the release of Grand Theft Auto 4, so there's a possibility that GTA GTA 6 could have began its development in 2013, but I personally think it's really unlikely. The rough idea for GTA 6 was definitely thought up while Dan Hauser and Michael Unsworth were still at Rockstar, but even if it wasn't, let's say Dan Hauser and Michael had no say in the narrative. There are still plenty of veterans working at Rockstar today, so to say that all of the good writers have left Rockstar is just false information. It was in her eyes, in the way she was leading us. But you said you knew Spanish. In 2022, GTA Online made Rockstar Games half a billion dollars. They made back what it cost them to make Red Dead Redemption 2 in a year. That's jaw-dropping. Due to the revenue GTA Online was generating Rockstar, I had a thought that was constantly running through my head, which was Rockstar doesn't even need to do a story for GTA 6. Most people I know haven't even touched the story for GTA 5, which is a real shame considering it's a great narrative. But Rockstar had every opportunity to make GTA 6 exclusively online. However, when the first trailer came out and the world officially saw that Jason and Lucia will be the protagonists of the next Rockstar narrative, it made me realize that we're not just dealing with any money-grabbing corporation here. Despite the the billions GTA Online has made, Rockstar is still advertising GTA 6 as a single player narrative, just like they have all their other games. Which goes to show, no matter how much money GTA Online makes, they still stay true to their legacy of making fun single player experiences. You tell me exactly what you want, and I will very carefully explain to you why it cannot be. What? For years, being an employee at Rockstar Games was like taking a rusty nail up the urethra. According to Jamie King, an ex-Rockstar veteran, games like Red Dead Redemption and Max Payne 3 had developers working 14 hours a day, 7 days a week, for months at a time. These conditions would severely deteriorate the mental health of developers, and in some cases, their marriages too. An article written in July 2007 titled Life During Wartime talks in depth about the experience working as a Rockstar employee. Just to give some examples of what the work conditions used to be like, I'm gonna quote the article. Every project involved at least four different approvals. Scott, Jenny Gross, Dan Hauser, and Terry Donovan. If any one of them requested a change, the project would be sent back. Often they didn't communicate and didn't agree with each other, so we'd do change only to have someone else up the chain ask us to change it back. Then an argument would inevitably ensue. And when I say argument, I mean screaming at the top of your lungs throwing objects around the office type of argument. This was not a relaxing environment in which to work. Another example of brutal Rockstar conditions is, Dan Hauser claimed that Red Dead Redemption 2 had developers working 100 hour work weeks. However, since then, Rockstar has cleaned up their act. A lot of higher ups that made Rockstar a toxic work environment have been fired and a lot of contractors have been hired on as full-time employees to avoid crunch culture. There's been numerous changes to the scheduling system to avoid seven day work weeks, and now they have a thing called Flexitime, where every extra hour an employee works can be banked as free time whenever. So a very common misconception about Rockstar is that the conditions are the same as they were five years ago, but that's just not true. When the GTA 6 trailer came out, it was nice to see a handful of developers on Twitter talking about how proud they were of the project. And if you just scroll for a bit on Glassdoor and see what employees have said about working at Rockstar, it's mostly very positive. Ah oh, shit, here we go again. 
Rockstar has an incredible library of games. Every single in-house project they have worked on has been praised by fans and critics. Many will say, well, what about the definitive editions of San Andreas 3 and Vice City? Those weren't developed by Rockstar, that was developed by Grove Street Games. Although Rockstar is at fault for the atrocious launch because they greenlit the project, it's clear that their priorities were somewhere else. Going off script for a second, but it's the same reason why GTA Online and Red Dead Online's updates are usually pretty half-assed. It's because they have have every single studio working on one project to make it the best thing in the world, so supporting their older games is kind of a miracle in itself. Jason Schreier reported that most of the developers for Red Dead Online have either quit or moved to GTA 6, so I wouldn't expect any updates for that service, which is really unfortunate because I love Red Dead Online. As for the recent Red Dead Redemption port, the ports were great. They're not broken at all, and there's a 60 frames per second patch on PlayStation. However, the cost is absolutely abysmal, so you should probably just wait for the sale if you're planning on getting it. The point is, every single game that Rockstar has prioritized has been a masterpiece, and with every single studio working on GTA 6, it's hard to believe that this will be the one that changes everything. It's the most anticipated game of all time. It's the first game being developed by a healthy work environment Rockstar, it has a rumored budget of $2 billion, and it's most likely been in development for 10 years. I think the best way to check the quality of GTA 6 is just by watching the trailer. Rockstar doesn't lie about how their games look. They even showed how the definitive editions looked in the trailer. They weren't lying about that. As for GTA 5 and Red Dead Redemption 2, those games actually look better than they did in their trailers. There's so many cool details such as parallax interiors, although according to the TikTok leaker, 70% of the buildings will be enterable, so it's actually debatable that these could be real interiors. The wheel on the bike is closer to the ground due to this guy's weight, and the wildlife variety is nothing short of computer wizardry. Who are you? Rip Van Winkle. In conclusion, the game is backed by talented writers, they're still promoting the game as a single player narrative, the work conditions at Rockstar have been cleaned up, they always deliver with their in-house projects, and the trailer looks incredible. So, according to my calculations, GTA 6 will absolutely slap. But you know what? My calculations don't even matter because I'm just a guy in a world filled with guys like you guys. So what do you guys think the GTA 6 launch will be like? Make sure to leave your answer in the comments below and I'll check it out as soon as I possibly can. As always, thank you so much for taking time out of your day to watch this video and make sure to have a good one.